Let's talk about floats. Floats stand for floating point values or floating point numbers. Both are pretty much the same thing in which you can think as numbers or values that float somewhere in between integers. So if both one and two are integers with two coming right after one, then a float makes up all the numbers in between one and two. 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, all the way to 1.9. But make no mistake about it. Floats aren't limited to just one decimal place. The value pi, for instance, is a float. It's most commonly represented as 3.14, but we have no idea how many actual decimal points pi has. As it stands, researchers have calculated the two quadrillionth digit for pi and are still researching how to calculate even more digits. So in short, the floating point values in between two integers are infinite. And that is pretty much the basic to floats. They can honestly take a little work to understand them in their entirety, but for now, all you need to know is that they are values in between integers. So now, let's take a look at a few examples on how to use floats with code. And we're going to do this by using two different languages, because I think it can be really helpful to see how they compare and contrast. And plus, you'll pretty much learn two languages at once. So on the left is the language C-sharp using the IDE Visual Studio, which should interest you if you want to do Windows development or if you want to make games using a popular game engine called Unity. And on the right is the language Python 3 using the IDE Visual Studio code, which should interest you if you want to get into more general programming or data science. Alright, so here I have two brand new console projects, and if you don't know how to make a new console project in either C-sharp or Python or both, be sure to check out the video in the description. Uh, it's called how to install an IDE. And at the end of that video, I'll show you how to do that. All right, so the first thing I wanna get into floats is the different operators. If you're familiar at all with the operators that integers use, then you'll be quite familiar with the operators that floats use as well. Why? Because they are the same exact operators. So jumping right into it in C sharp here on the left, I'm just going to get rid of these two lines because I don't need them anymore. They come standard with every single new console project. And I'm just going to initialize a float. So I'm going to type out floats and then I'm going to call it A just for an example. And I'm going to assign a zero to it. Actually, that's no fun because zero is integer. So let's assign uh, let's assign 7.77 that sounds fun now actually before we get into talking about operators let's touch a bit on the syntax between Python and C sharp there's not really much to the differences between the syntax of floats however in C sharp you do have to clarify that your numeric value is a float by adding an F at the end of the numeric value this is just further instructions to tell the compiler on how they should go about handling this numeric value. Simply meaning when your code is turned into instructions for a computer to do, when it gets to this line right here, it reads the flow and it knows without any confusion that this is a floating point value. However, there is a caveat. Even though this variable A is a float variable, you don't always have to add the float to the end of your values. For example, if you instead just say float A is an integer seven, floats automatically can convert themselves from integers to floats. Therefore, you don't have to add the F. Now, while in C-sharp, you have to add the F at the end of floating point values. In Python, you don't have to do that. All you have to do is just type out whatever value that you want to do, 7.77, and Python will take care of the rest for you. And Python is able to do this because it's a type of language called an interpreted language, where all you have to do is assign a value to a variable, and it will interpret what data type that variable should have which in a lot of cases is pretty nice because you don't have to worry about the differences between floating point values or integers. You can just do sums and multiplication, division, and not have to worry about any of that stuff. But now let's get into some operators, starting with the increment operator. So an increment operator does exactly what it describes. It increments. And the syntax for that goes like this. A plus plus. That's it. If we were to come down here and do a console dot right line that just will print to the console for us. And then we also need a console dot read key for C sharp so that the console doesn't close on us. And I'm going to hit the start button and bring the console window over. You can see that it just increments in by one plus one to 7.77 gives us 8.77. And that is the increment operator. 
Now, in my experiences, it's not like a terribly good handy tool, but it can save you some time. Oftentimes, if you just want to add one to something, instead of having to do like full out uh, other operator, you can just do, you know, the variable plus plus and you're done. And to do the increment operator in Python, you actually can't do an increment operator in Python. If we were to type out A++, you can see that our IDE shows that it's red to let us know that this is not a thing in Python. Every language is different and Python just doesn't care about the increment operator, I guess. So now, imagine that you want to add more than one to your float. How would you go about doing that? Well, that is where our next operator, the addition operator, comes into play. The syntax for the addition operator goes like so. So you want to do a, or your variable, your float, plus equals, and then whatever value. So we can do plus equals one to do another way to do an increment operator, or we can pass in a float. We can do, for example, 3.33f. And again, I added an f to the end of this value because it is a floating point value. And if we were to run this, hit the start button, bring the window over, you can see that we got 11.1. Now, just a minor note, just to make sure we're covering all bases, you can see that it does not print out 11.1F. And the reason for that is because the F is something that only the computer needs. Once the computer sees the code, reads the F, and sees that it's a floating point value, there's no point to return that back to us because we're humans and we're smart and we know the difference between a float and an int just by looking at it. Moving along. To use the addition operator in Python, it's absolutely no different syntax-wise. You do your variable, in our case a, plus equals 3.33. And again, we don't need to add an f because it's Python, and Python doesn't care about f's. If I were to come down here and write print uh, a, and then save it and hit the play button, you can see down here that we will get 11.1. .1. And as far as adding is concerned, the final way that you can add a value to your float is by doing something that I like to call a modified assignment. Now this isn't a technical term, I'm not sure if it has one or not, but I like to distinguish this from regular assignments. So what we're gonna do is just get rid of all of this just to clear up confusion, and then we can do a equals uh, a, plus 3.33f. And there you have a modified assignment. Now, whoa, what's going on here? It looks a little bit confusing. Well, don't worry, let me walk you through it. First thing you need to know is that this is the assignment operator and everything that is on the right side of an assignment operator is calculated first. So the whatever the state of A is, which in this case is 7.77, is going to be added to 3.33. And once that result is calculated, then it's going to throw that result to the left side of the assignment, which is, again is A. So in a sense, we're assigning A to equal what it currently equals plus some extra value. We're just updating it really. Just a few different ways to do the same thing, but you as the developer have the choice to go with whatever best fits your programming styles. And just to prove to you that this is the exact same result, I'm gonna hit the start button, bring the window over, and you can see that again, we have 11.1. And over in Python, to do a modified assignment is the same exact syntax. So I'm going to remove this line, just to clear all confusion, start over, and we can do a equals itself plus 3.33. And just to prove to you it's the same exact result, I'm going to hit the play button, and you can see, boom, another 11.1. Next up, we have a few operators for subtracting, and the first one is the decrement operator. Well, you already know what the increment operator does, so guessing what the decrement operator does should be a no-brainer. Yes, you guessed it. It simply just minuses one from your float. And just like the increment operator is plus plus, well, the decrement operator is minus minus. That's all there's to it. And to prove to you that it does what I say it does, I'm gonna hit the start button, bring the window over, and you can see we have 6.77 because 7.77 minus one is, of course, 6.77. And again, from my experiences, not the most helpful operator out there. It can help you save some time writing code here and there, but it is what it is. And also, again, in Python, just as they don't have the increment operator, well, they also don't have the decrement operator. I can type out A minus minus, and you can see it turns red, letting us know that this is not a thing in this language. 
And so, if you want to subtract more than one from your float, you can use what's called the subtraction operator. And the syntax for that is probably just as you expect. Minus equals and then your float value or your integer value, whatever numeric value. And just to prove it to you, I'm gonna hit the start button and bring the window over. And as you can see, 7.77 minus 3.33 equals 4.44. And over in Python, the subtraction operator is the same exact syntax. We're gonna get rid of this, start over. A minus equals and then your value. And just to prove that to you, I'm gonna hit the play button and you can see that we have 4.43999999. Now, some of you are probably going, what's up with this discrepancy? C Sharp said 4.44, but Python says 4.43999, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm just gonna give it to you straight. Floating point values is something made by the devil. <laughs> it's important to remember that floating points are the values in between integers. And that space in between any two integers is infinite and anything dealing with infinity <laughs> but long story short if you're just starting out you don't have to concern yourself with things like this at the moment at some point in time perhaps you might dig into some project that requires like really precise floating point precision and at that point you can pull your hair out but for now, just know the reason why you're seeing this is because in C-sharp, floats around into the nearest digit. There are more accurate uh, data types, but that's beyond the scope for this, this course. And for almost all your applications, two to three point floating precision is oftentimes good enough. You don't need to worry yourself with this kind of accuracy. It's part of the reason why we have calculated about, I think the quadrillionth digit of pi, but we often just round it off to 3.14 because oftentimes that's a good enough precision estimate. Moving on, the final way that we can subtract is of course by using a modified assignment. And to do a modified assignment for subtracting, all we do is get rid of this and we do A equals itself minus 3.33F. And just to prove to you that works just as I say it does, I'm gonna hit the play button, bring it over, and you can see that we have 4.44. And over in Python, the syntax is no different than C sharp. We can do A equals itself minus 3.33. I'm gonna save, hit the play button, and you can see that we got 4.43999. <laughs> Next up, the multiplication operator. Whenever you want to do multiplication to your floats, you simply just have to use the multiplication operator. And the syntax for that goes like this. A times equals two, for example. And when you run this, it's simply just going to take your float A and times it by two. And to prove that to you, I'm hit the start button and bring the window over. You can see that 7.77 times two equals 15.54. And of course, what you times your float by doesn't have to be an integer. It can be a floating point, uh, but of course it just has to be some numeric value. And over in Python, the syntax is the same exact as it is in C sharp. A times equals two. Prove that to you, hit the play button and you can see that we have 15.54. And of course, another way we can do multiplication is if we do a modified assignment. And the syntax for that, of course, you already know it, is A equals A times two. Prove that to you, I'll hit the start button and bring the window over, and again, we have 15.54. And in Python, the syntax is no different. We can do A equals A times two, and then I'm gonna press play and show it to you that again we have 15.54. Now one thing that you didn't see me do is like something like a times times. Uh, and the reason for that is unlike subtraction or addition, there is no sort of incrementing multiplication. What does that even mean really? And so moving on, the final operator is the division operator, which the syntax for that goes as follows. A divided by equals two. Now let's make it interesting, let's say 2.15. And of course, what this is gonna do is gonna take our A float and it's gonna divide it by 2.15. And to prove that to you, I'm gonna hit the start button and bring the window over and you can see that we have 3.613953. That's gonna be fun to say over and over. And over in Python, the division operator is the same exact syntax. So we can do A divided by equals 
0.15. And to prove that to you, I'm going to hit the play button, and you can see that Python is a lot worse. We have 3.613953, and it goes on and on. I know that I'm kind of demonizing the long uh, decimal points with Python, but it's actually a good thing that they give you this precision right out the box. And the final way we can divide is by using a modified assignment, which the syntax for that looks like this. Uh, I'm just going to start over to make it a bit less confusing. A equals A divided by 2.15F. And just to prove that to you, I'm gonna hit the start button and bring the window over. You can see again, we have 3.613953. And yeah, there you have it. Floats are pretty useful in the world of programming. They're used for a lot of different applications. And don't let me scare you with the whole floating point precision talk. It's very, very rare that you'll have to be in this world of floating points. Usually you won't go no further than like two or three point uh, precision which at that precision, everything's really simple to understand. But that's pretty much everything you need to know to get started with programming in regards to floats.